Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Agnomatica 2 Expert Mode. So last episode we got quantum suit arm uh, quantum suit chest plate from the mob farm over here, and we found out that the quantum suit chest plate has a jetpack. Oh yeah. Um I'm very sorry about the audio quality of last episode. I had to cut almost ten minutes out because you just could not understand me. This episode I'm hoping to be a little bit better, and let's get started. Okay, so the plan for today is that I'm going to set up automated, um, I'm thinking empowered canola. Um, what does the empowerer cost? Ah, the normal. These are all normal recipes I'm assuming. Well, other than that, of course. So today we're going to set up at least crystallized canola. That stuff is pretty easy. I'm also going to need some fluid droppers. Um, I'll set that up for auto crafting. But we're going to automate it with integrated dynamics, if you were wondering, instead of XNet or something like that, because. Um, Integrated Dynamics has logic, and when you make something more complex, it's always better, right? Right? What do you mean it's not? Yes, it is. Um, so I'm... That's a very nice amount of impregnated sticks right there. Um, I'm going to... Eh, I guess I'll do it right now. I want... I'm going to want the auto placer which needs the Payless, and this needs the, oh, Void. So Payless and Void come over here. Atomic reconstruct them. Oh yeah. Um, I'll never probably use those on just these. But there's the auto placer and the auto breaker. Pop them into the molecule. I guess I won't be popping them into the molecular assembler. So, what does the mole molecular assembler cost? What do I need? Iron sheet metal. Iron. Iron. Let's do 12. And then I'm going to need a crafter tier 3, which I have a tier 2. Oh, come on. 16 of these. And two analog crafters. There's our crafter tier 3. And our iron sheet metal. And boom, molecular assembler. And now I'm just going to fully um, kit this out right now and grab two, three, four, five, six interfaces. And what is it? Five. So I need six acceleration cards, and I'll be back when these are done crafting. And there we go. All the acceleration cards and in the interfaces. Now you might be wondering why I have six because this was missing one and where's that interface go where did it go i don't know no give me my shovel okay so that just had these in it i'm confused oh so take this one out and go now Last episode, I think I had to cut it out because it was so bad. Um, I set up this export bus. How do you get out, Fletcher? Thanks for the head. I won't be using it. Um, I set this export bus to take my tools out, but apparently it's not very smart when it's trying to craft something. So shovel, get my shovel out and grab the pattern that went in okay 
Now, eventually, I'm gonna have to move this. I know. And it's probably gonna be down. Um, because I love digging, I guess. Uh, we are at 17 of 32 channels. Um, if this wasn't so ex- Well, it's not expensive. Um... Uh... There we go. Had to do a little bit of rearranging, but the old molecular assembler is over here with all of its patterns. And this is the new one. And then I just put the uh, crafting coprocessors in the floor, for lack of a better place. Um, so that means that I can come over here and click auto, auto placer, I think times one. So, okay, apparently I haven't taught it how to make aluminum wire. But coming over here, we've got 44 impregnated sticks. That's it. From 2000 seed oil. Oh well. But we've got our impregnated sticks. And then over here, I'm going to teach it. How many aluminum wire do I have? Also, I changed my texture pack back so that these are the default textures. Let's see. Come on. One makes two. So up here, we want to type in aluminum. This is aluminum, not aluminium. There is a difference, weirdly. Why can't we just decide on one? Because we're human. Um, wire, metal press wire. There we go. And now, auto. Need one of these and one of these. And we're just crafting aluminum wire. Ding. And we're also going to need buckets. A couple of them. Fluid collector. Fluid placer. And make 20. Why not? Uh, because he uses iron. Okay, other than that, why not? I don't know. Um, so... If you have never used integrated dynamics, that's okay. You're going to learn today. I'm going to take this off. Um, first of all, you have to make this squeezer right here from integrated dynamics and put it next to a drying basin on one of the sides where this flows. If you were to put a portable tank uh, um, uh, right here instead of the drying basin, it would fill with crystallized mineral or whatever it's called. And then you just have to jump on it till it squeezes it all out and I've actually made a contraption that pushes a armor stand up and down I might do that it's actually pretty funny but you can also make the mechanical squeezer which does it for RF and that works just as well so logic cables you're gonna need a bunch of these and at integrated da dynamics. What was that other one? Oh, integrated tunnels. Goody. I love integrated. Well, I've not ever actually used integrated tunnels, so I can't say that I love them, but I've heard they're pretty good. Logic director. Oh dear. There's stuff from the end. Why? Why would you do this to me? Um, okay. So this is for um, omnidimensional. Place energy into the world. What in the world does that do? How does it do it? Like, it's kind of weird. Uh, okay. So, they're kind of useful. Except not for really advanced stuff. And now, from the looks of it, we're going to need um, a battery. So, I'm going to just make a basic battery. 
Well, looks like I won't be making a basic battery. Um, I'm gonna actually just set up that contraption right now. And then I need a lock. And this will work. And a lever, 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 and an armor stand. Oh, there's the armor stand, and what you do is you place the armor stand here. Sweet, it has arms. Wait, it's come to take over. And then you go, like, I don't know, right there. The piston, and that, and a redstone clock. Now you just stand here. Whoa. Hello everyone. I am automating it in a way that doesn't require power, so yay for me. Um, in just a minute here, when I run out of logs, I will explain it all to you, and then, then we'll get started with integrated dynamics. There we go. Ran all out of logs. There we go. Um, so the concept behind this is a mechanical user. No, I'm kidding. Um, so this mechanical user is set to activate block with item within a random slot. And I think these are pretty smart and they'll choose um, only a slot that has an item in it. So it puts the log in here. Also, if you um, aren't sma smashing it consistently, it will take it back out, but that's not too much of a problem. And then once this is squeezed, um, all the liquid stuff goes into this ultimate fluid tank, which I just made it ultimate because I was bored. Um, it could be a basic one. It could be a uh, stone barrel for all it really matters. And then you have to make sure you flip this in time because every time you flip it, it resets. Sadly, keeping it on does not keep it open like I thought it would. Um, and then the liquid resin has a casting basin recipe that is actually faster in drying than the mechanical dryer basin or whatever. So I have a pressurized fluid conduit into here, which the, and then an ender item conduit from Ender.io. Um, bringing it over to here, and in no time at all, I've got 55 blocks of crystallized mineral. So, back on course we go. And make all of this. And now we're gonna make a battery. We are going to need a variable store. We're also going to need a logic. Nah, eh, only gonna need one of these. But every system you make needs a variable store, unless it's a pretty dumb system. And then we're also going to want the materializer. Oh, we're going to want a little bunch of these. Thankfully, they are cheap. Very cheap. But um, the materializer, if it's the one that I'm thinking it is, um, takes the current state of a variable and sets it as a constant. So instead of the, oh, come on, stop using my variable stores. Um, instead of, I'm not sure how much you know about integrated dynamics, but we're gonna want a world reader, which means we're gonna want one of these. But what integrated dynamics does is you can read information about world, about entities, about sound, um, the block in front of it, we want that. Um, yeah, I think we want the block reader instead 
Um, worlds, blocks, and entities. I'll do the world reader. Um, I'm going to need the world reader, and I'm also going to need a couple of redstone writers. So I'm going to want several redstone writers. Um, I'll, I'll make all four. And then, you know, I'll make a display. Maybe I won't. Because that's kind of time consuming. Uh, got it. Oh, come on. I just want a display panel. You're making it very hard. Okay, we've got a display panel. And I think that's everything we need, really. Um, yeah, I have variable cards. I have logic programmer. I think I've got everything. Now, I have automated, I believe it's up to the, um, up to crystallized oil without this just using redstone pulses, but I have it and gonna use it. I just realized I'm gonna want to make the labeler because that comes in very handy. Um, I won't be using the wrench because I've already got a crescent hammer, which um, I'm pretty sure will work, but I need the labeler, which needs a book and quill, which of course needs a book, not a bool, a book. And there we go. And labeler. Come on. Labeler. Oh, you know what I should do? Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this block of crystallized mineral and just stick it in the compacting storage. If I can find an empty slot. Okay, so I've got my power cell. I'm just going to put it right there, set it for out, and as you can tell, things are going quite well as we go for power. Well, most of the time anyway. Um, so I'm going to put the battery right here, and this is... Wow, that is hard to read down at the bottom. Oh, I know why. Um, but we're going to... All things are going to run from the battery and the variable store. There you go. You have your first network. Now, it doesn't do anything, but you have a network. So, do these have fluids? Yes, fluid imports fluids into the network. Fluid interface. Okay, so you need a, f um, you know what, I'm gonna use that tank right there, that ultimate tank. And what I'm going to do is set, um, well, you're going to see what I'm going to do. Over on this side, I guess, hmm, where to put it? them all close together. Okay, so I finally got it done. What I did is I set these all out in a row, used um, my reservoir on them all, and got all of the refined canola oil out of them, put them all here, set everything to insert only, and then now it's working, thankfully. Um, what I'm going to do to extract them, I think, is... No, I'm probably just going to somehow route all of these into a tank, and then interface it away and onward and such. Um, so I need another tank, and let's see. Basic fluid tank is all I need. And I'm going to put these away. And I need... I feel like there's a zombie sneaking up on me. 
Oh, there's a ravine downstairs. I thought it was all lit up by the cave illuminator. Guess I was wrong. Um, fluid interface. Make two of those. And fluid world fluid exporter. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Okay, so I've hooked all of these fermenting barrels up to a basic fluid tank with these conduits. Um, it was a lot easier than the other one was. Um, so, did I really only grab fluid interface? And I didn't grab fluid importers or exporters or nothing. Um, wait. Okay. Um, what does a uh, wireless booster card cost? Um, Fluix dust and ender dust. Fluix. Uh, just make 20. And then ender dust is one ender pearl and a macerator. Um, gonna take a minute and sort out the mob farm and I'll be back with you when I'm done. Okay there we have two wireless booster crafts. Um, the problem is that just increased it by sure it doubled it but it also doubled its RF usage now I'm thinking about moving it down here just so that I have it while I'm working. I'm actually not used to using the wireless crafting terminal so every time I uh, miss something it's like oh man walk back all the way to the AE2 system walk all the way back but I guess today I can just stick this right there and there's the entire system now way up is right here. I wanted fluid importers and exporters. So there's a fluid importer. I should only need one. And I'm going to put it right here. Now these are very similar to a two cables where you need a cable to that connects with everything else. Now I'm just going to go under the floor here. Um, There we go. There we go. And that is now connected to the system. Now, I wanted to have this ultimate ta tank be the interface. So, su supposedly, let's see, interface channel, let's do two. And. Import all fluids. Through. There we go. This is now filling with refined canola oil. Uh, yep. And now for the tricky part. We're going to take our fluid placer right here. Over here, we're going to have our fluid connector and then we're going to need two droppers now if we had this chorus stuff um, I would use world item exporters and world item fluid placers and collectors for all of this but I don't so I'm using droppers and um, collectors and stuff like that so dropper here and a dropper here now, if I remember right, I need also need a redstone torch, which it doesn't have. A redstone torch right there. Just to change it to pulse mode. And now we're going to take our redstone writers and put, you know, I'm going to do above, just so that I can reach them all easily. And I'm also going to need a world or, yeah, world reader on that block right there. 
so that I'm also eh, going to have a display panel right here. Okay. Logic cables on all of these and connect it up. And that is all of the physical building that needs to be done. Now, that's the easy part. Now, what is it? What's the difference between the proxy and the materializer? I don't know. Um, I'm also going to need a few um, fluid exporters. No, just one. Degraded dynamics. Uh, fluid, fluid, fluid exporter. And I'm going to put it on this one. And just double checking that the crescent wrench is or dictionary. It is not. So I need to make this wrench. And with this wrench, you can do everything that you can with the normal wrench. Shift right click, um, right click to break off, stuff like that. Right click to join it again, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this needs to be set to export fluid. Current variable cannot be. Where did I pick up? Didn't pick up anything. I need what? I'm gonna put um, a bit of it right there. Uh, that. Oh, sweet. There's a rain countdown, so I know when it's gonna rain next. But this is not the one that I wanted. It does that the other one didn't is tell you what current block is. So right now, there's a has block true, there's a dimension, there's a coordinates, but it's this block right here. Um, we're fine. Now, this is a variable. If that changes, then this changes. This just tells the system, hey, I'm representing what this block, what this does. So I'm going to name it oil block for better for lack of a better name and now over here in the materializer I'm gonna make a card that says oh variable ID 1 is equal to refined canola oil so if I were to put this in here all it would say is oh refined canola oil I think but what we want is to right here always export fluid refined canola oil right Right. Anyways, what's my hair? It's crazy. I've never used this, so okay, fluid. Um item contains no fluid. Okay, let's pick this up then. And Fluid, this, fluid, refined canola oil. Okay. So this is where you get basically everything. There's also a stand standing version. Don't know why you'd want it, but yep, it's there. So oil block and export fluid, refined canola oil. There. There. And now it is exporting refined canola oil at as fast as it comes in. Now, these can be put in the crafting grid to clear them. And now for the fun part. We're going to, let's put, oh, this one is gonna be crystallized canola and I actually need crystallized canola for this. So I'm gonna need a atomic reconstruct. SIU. Okay, I'm gonna go get another atomic reconstructor and I'll be back with you when I do. Okay, 
So I got an atomic reconstructor and while I was at it, I just plain built the empower. So the trick is the atomic reconstructor, um, just a sec, got distracted. Um, the atomic reconstructor shoots out a laser. Um, I need a redstone torch. But it shoots out a laser in front of it, and anything in its path, it will try to crystallize until it runs out of power. Now, it wants canola seeds. And if you couldn't notice, this is not producing them fast enough. At least fast enough for me, anyway. Um, so, on my other... Um, on FTP Continuum, I just made a bunch of greenhouse glass. Um, but on here, I'd have to go mining for a long time, because you need a sapphire. And to get sapphires, you're probably going to want to make sapphire essence from mystical agriculture. It's a tier 4 seed though, which means, yuck, and I need a lot of sapphire. And the only way to get sapphire is from biomes. And I have no idea which biome it is. So I'll be looking that up and going mining. But I need a lot of it. So I think I'm going to save this um, pending upgrade kind of thing. But... Now that there's logic tunnels, I'm thinking maybe I should get a different use the use um, integrated dynamics to regulate canola flow instead of just kind of randomly hoping it works. But what I had before kind of worked, it just needed a lot of power. So I'm gonna run power to the display stands and I'm gonna figure something out with the atomic reconstructor and I'll meet you back when I'm done. So I came over here to get two ender pearls for a uh, ranged collector and guess who's got some quantum suit leggings? Yeah, me, that's who. Okay, so I checked in and my quantum suit leggings are done charging. So I'm just gonna throw these away. Now, there's no info on them, so they just like, oh my goodness, that is fast. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, I really like that. Quantum suit is the way to go until you get into Draconic, um, especially when it's free. Um, but I want a tier installer which needs elite to these I said two of these and four of these oh don't strafe very fast out of power because you use what your full oh I bet this got set to something not with something that isn't push wait these have power which means that it's one of those weird M um flux ducts and um, wire connectors don't like each other so if we were to do that come on come on like that don't like that fall damage thing and the boots um, we should be getting our steel casing now yep and we have an advanced tier installer and I'm gonna use this on but I'm going to use it on the basic infusing factory because that is my least favorite thing because it takes a long time. Um, so ranged collector 
over here. And what I've done in the past is you take a pre pressure plate, maybe a wood one, wooden pressure plate, and no, not like that, like this. And then you have a dropper on top. Now, in the past I've used a precision dropper, but I'm assuming that the precision dropper is kind of expensive. So I'm just gonna go with the normal dropper. Oh, now I remember why you use um, the automatic precision, the precision dropper because it can be redstone controlled. Oh well, I can make it. And it's set to deactivation. And I'm going to quickly connect these up with um, energy conduits, and I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, so a bit of progress has been made. I've spent a bunch of time just kind of fiddling around. Don't actually need that. Or this. Um, but basically, every canola seed that ever comes in right here is going to try to get into this chest. And then this interface is going to tell the system, oh hey, there's a canola seed in this chest. And the system's going to go like, hey, try to put it in one of these four exporters right here, which have a vari variable card with the value of canola seeds, which can be set in the portable programmer thingy to type item. Just stick the item right here, put a variable card right there, and pop, you've got an item. And then it's going to be like, oh hey, those are all full. Oh, this one has a priority of negative two. Put it in here. So it puts it in here, gets dropped down, it gets turned into crystallized canola. Then this interface right here, now the reason I'm using interfaces and not importers is because the interface will leave the item here until it has a place to go. So the interface is going to say, there's crystallized canola here, and the system is going to say, hey, go put that over here in this empowerer. And then, if that fails, it's going to be, hey, come put it in here. Now, there is a problem with this. Um, this means that what happens if this is full of empowered canola seeds and this is empty of crystallized canola? Well, that sucks. That's basically it. Um, I'm thinking about making a bunch of cloches in between episodes to augment this pretty bad farm, to be honest. Um, it's very slow. So then it come um you have crystallized canola and empowered oil and right here you have um brain not working. Um you have the refined canola oil coming in right there, going into the system, being stored in this ultimate fluid tank, and being exported into this fluid placer. Now this fluid placer, every time it gets a redstone pulse, it's going to try to put down a block of can um, the canola block. And now we have to set up so that whenever it reads that there is a canola block, a block of canola oil or whatever it is, it's going to tell this dropper, okay, fire. Then it's going to be like, oh hey, now this is crystallized canola oil. Hey, you there, with the empowered oil, fire. Oh, now it's empowered canola oil. You there, fluid collector, pick it up. And then this is, okay, fluid placer, there's nothing there. Place it down, and rinse and repeat. So I'm going to start working on this. And also I found out this pack doesn't, doesn't need power. So this battery was a waste.
Okay, so I finished most of it up. I have all of the oil generators in a line. I've got pressurized fluid conduits with enhanced energy conduits behind them plugged into the power cell. I've got exporting um, and powered oil. If you're wondering how I got that, you go to fluid and then put a container with the fluid such as this and then grab a card and you have your static variable of empowered oil. Um, right now the only problem is there's going to be a nine stack. Um, there's going to be a large... this system right here operates on a backlog. Um, first this fills up and then empowered oil starts getting generated. empowered canola seeds are, start getting produced faster and then this fills up 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 and then those start to fill up and we've got constant power it's kind of annoying and a pretty sketchy system but it kinda works but it's producing a significant amount of power like that's a nice amount of power and it basically took very only a bunch of very simple logic so I'll show you what I mean about um, the backlog thing it will take if I put in 39 those will all get one and then that'll get the rest watch like that and then this all of a sudden has 32 it's instantaneous transfer much like XNet, which is kind of annoying because I wanted to be very slow going into that. But, no, oh well. Um, I'm going. I think that's actually all the time. I, that's actually all the time I've got for today. So, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you learned something today. And in between episodes, I will make a bunch of cloches to augment the pretty bad farm upstairs. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.